And uh, quite frankly, even though their foreign policies are, are a little bit different, they're both authoritarians. They both want to use power. They both want to increase the money in, into the military. They don't talk about peace. They talk about toughness. And I can, I can do more against ISIS than the other person can. And the whole reason is they won't admit, the Democrats won't admit that there's Islamic radical terrorism. <laughs> you know, if they would only say that, it would solve the problem. Magic. But do they ever talk about possibly a religious uh, element in, in those in this country who advocate all these wars, you know, uh, are, are they not participating in this thing? If, if they drop uh, drone missiles on, on uh, funerals and kill innocent people to the tune of tens of thousands, yeah. hundreds of thousands, some people estimate a million people have died because of our interventions over there. So it's, um, it's, 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 I think they're missing the, the whole point about uh, using words, but both of them use fear. Yeah. If, you, if you look at that in foreign policy, you know, they can do this and, and that. And, and Hillary's, Hillary's foreign policy of, of uh, you know, uh, no-fly zones and all these other things, it, it is so interventionist. But I think they're both interventionists. One is a nationalistic nationalist who uses uh, force to intervene for making make America the greatest exceptionalism and this sort of thing. And she's an internationalist doing the same thing. And, uh, but nobody said, I was waiting for him to say, what's the solution to Syria? Well, bring the troops home. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say that. Hope you weren't holding your breath <laughs> yeah. because it would have been a bad thing. The, the thing that shocked me, you talk about, talk about the Syria, because that was a good part of the debate, a uh, large chunk. Uh, I was shocked at how ill-informed or deceptive both candidates are. Uh, either their advisors are telling them really nothing about reality or they're purposely obfuscating what's really happening. And Hillary said, uh, here, th these are more or less quotes, there is a determined effort by the Russian Air Force to destroy Aleppo in order to eliminate the last of the Syrian rebels who are holding out against the Syrian regime. And that makes these rebels sound like, you know, brave people holding out against the regime. But surely she knows because the Obama administration itself has admitted on numerous occasions that the rebels holding eastern Aleppo are al-Qaeda. And actually, as of yesterday, an ISIS flag went up on a hill in east Aleppo. So these aren't brave rebels, and she knows it. These are al-Qaeda, and these are ISIS. Um, the other thing about uh, attacking the city, which is a horrible thing. Nobody will say it's wonderful that they're attacking the city. It's a horrible thing. But it certainly isn't unprecedented. Look at Fallujah, where we destroyed it at least twice to get out the Iraqi rebels. So there's just no sense of history. Yeah, when, when I hear that, it, it seems like she's setting the stage for the next war. Yeah. You know, it's, it's Russia. Russia did this. And, but, uh, but Trump participates in it because, you know, when it comes to, you know, he has one position with Syria. And it's better than Hillary's. But then another position of saying, well, let's continue the uh, coup of 1953 to put in the Shah, and we have to get rid of those radicals of, uh, in Iran, even though they've, uh, they, they were better off now with talking to people. And uh, so this, is, this to me is, is, is very discouraging, but it confuses the people yeah. because they don't know where it's seeing. But I will give uh, Trump a little bit of credit you know, uh, although overall policy, uh, he doesn't reassure him. But the fact that uh, he challenged his vice presidential candidate, yeah. you know, uh, well, I don't agree with that and passed on <laughs> on to that. Well, because he's he's against, you know, us starting the bombing over there and Hillary wanted to. Uh, so but uh, there's still all this effort to try to build up another enemy. They can't stand the thought of peace breaking out, you know, and. Uh, uh, and and if, if you look at what we have done and intervened and, and been involved in, how many, how many civilians have died at our hands? And, you know, they're a little bit worried about, uh, you know, the so-called legal, legalizing uh, our ability or the, the victims of 9-11 to yeah. sue Saudi Arabia. 
they're terrified that they could sue us, yeah. you know, because some people died at our hands. And what some people have uh, said, uh, not uh, too many Americans, although there's some Americans that Bush committed war crimes. So they're, now they're starting to, hey, maybe we've moved too fast on this. <laughs> and, you know, what are we going to do now? Which is rather ironic. Yeah. And, you know, Trump was also apparently, to me at least, so ill-informed about Syria and I wonder who, who advises him on this because I mean, Hillary opened the door to a great retort, but he gets it so confused, like you said, and so wrong. He, he, on one hand, he praises the Russians. They're, they're, they're bombing the heck out of ISIS. That's great. And then he attacks Iran, which is also bombing the heck out of ISIS, is attacking ISIS, is very actively involved in fighting ISIS. And he says it's, it's all our fault that Iran is strong. And it doesn't make any sense. And the other thing he said, oh, well, this is all our, this is all your fault, Hillary, because we haven't modernized our nukes yet. You know, we need a trillion dollars. But I will say he said one thing that was good. And if he if he were smarter, had better advisors, I think he would develop this because she's going on about these glorious rebels that we have to save. And he comes back with she doesn't even know who these rebels are. Every time we take rebels, whether Iraq or elsewhere, we're arming people. And you know what happens? They end up being worse than the people before. Look what she did in Libya with Gaddafi. You know, that's a good sentiment. He needs to build on that. <laughs> like, look at every place we've been. Yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, where have we created any great democratic system where they uh, argue for peace and prosperity and free markets? I mean, it, it hasn't existed. It's always been more chaotic uh, because we're using violence to try to impose uh, our will, and we're seen as outsiders. So even if somebody there was sympathetic, matter of fact, what happens if there are factions sympathetic to maybe the Western way of life? Once we get involved, they have to become unified, and they tend to agree with the people who say they're invaders. You know, and that's how they they ha they get the moral high ground. I think there was a bit of that in Vietnam. We 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 didn't uh, win because we were the invaders. We came a long way off, and we were killing a lot of people. But that seems to be the case. You know, whether it's uh, in Egypt or Libya or uh, any of these countries that uh, we 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 get involved and uh, not, do nothing more than cause more antagonism. And even Afghanistan, Obama, as you pointed out, he called it the good war. And now, 15 years later. The Taliban control so much territory. They control the countryside. Uh, you know, in terms of territory-wise, they control you know a lot of the country, and it's in far worse shape. How can anyone argue that it's been a success? And in, in fact, we're, we are losing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but uh, of course, the other word I used was the forgotten war. Yeah. I just wonder if somebody did a man in the street interview with people, uh, honestly, a, a man in the street interview, find out how many people, whether they know about where Aleppo is. Or, but, but really, uh, what the history of in the last 15 years has been, uh, you know, in Afghanistan. I mean, it's it's just astounding that we put up with this. But the uh, members of Congress, just as, you know, remember the attitude they had when they were giving the authority to the president to go into uh, into Iraq. Of course, he already went into Afghanistan on his own, yeah. you know, and, and started that war, and, and it's ongoing. And I understand it costs a little bit of money, too. I mean, that's contributing to it. And we wear out the weapons. It just really makes those arms manufacturers so nervous. They're wearing out our weapons. Oh, okay. And you have both sides saying, we need to really, really rebuild the military because uh, you can't ever tell when they're going to invade our country. But that's beside the point. They're not worrying about invasion. They're worrying about our interests, our national security interests being attacked, which means that we might be challenged in one of these countries that we're <laughs> occupying. Maybe Assad will find an ally and defend his city and defend his country, you know, regardless of all the other pros and cons on that. Nobody realizes that uh, we're on the wrong side of that. Yeah. And when you think of 2011, you know, what happened in Libya and then Syria and it's ongoing uh, and now the troops are being added uh, to, to these areas. So I didn't see the answers coming out uh, last Last night, uh, so I guess I guess we have to keep our fingers crossed, but keep working harder. You know, the the the, the other thing, if you don't mind, uh, that, that I noticed uh, was Hillary came out and said to the American people, "The Russians are fixing the election in favor of Trump," and she was very, very two bold of two or three times, and it was very strong. And here's here's one thing that she said: 
We have never in history of our country been in a situation where an adversary, a foreign power, is working so hard to influence the outcome of the elections. Believe me, they don't want me to win, to be elected. And she's, and, and very interestingly, we, we put up a piece by Peter Van Buren on our site, who we, who we know very well, and he had a great point that really someone is uh, uh, working to fix the elections, and it's not the Russian government, it's the U.S. government. Because he points out that the director of national intelligence, just a couple of days before this debate, you remember la the end of last week, came out with a statement saying the Russians did it. The Russians <laughs> hacked the DNC. And here was, here's what he offered as his conclusive proof that they did. The recent hacked email disclosures are consistent with methods and motivations of Russian detect, d directed efforts. <laughs> Is that a smoking gun? That's not even a squirt gun. <laughs> yeah. But you know what would, would be an interesting statistic if somebody could dig up and find out every time our CIA was involved in manipulating elections around the world, all the way ba back to Diem in, in Vietnam and other places. As a matter of fact, in Central America, even before that, for 100 years, we, we've been involved in, in, in setting up dictators. I mean, that's, that's the American tradition. That must be what we call American exceptionalism. Yeah, we, we can, can set up governments any place that we want. Well, remember that there's a, a Time magazine that ran after the second Yeltsin election that had a picture of the buffoonish-looking Yeltsin, and it said, Yanks to the Rescue, and the subtitle was something about how Americans helped to re-elect uh, Yeltsin, if that's not interference. <laughs> but, you know, Peter points out, why would the Russians whisk, risk a cyber war with the U.S. to put Trump in office? Because Trump, you know, has, as you've pointed out many times, neocon tendencies. He's a hothead. You pointed out he's likely to put his finger on the button. Where for all of Hillary's bluster, she's a career politician. She's somewhat of a realist. She's a known known you would think that the Russians would hedge their bets on a known known rather than a hot hit. So it's not, it's not, you know, prima facie. It's not in, 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 obvious that, that that they would want to have Trump elected in the first place. For those individuals out there who still believe that the neocons have drifted over and been open, you know, the Bushes endorsing uh, Hillary, that's pretty significant. But, uh, you know, Trump uh, has a little bit of neocon support, and it continues to grow. Yeah. So uh, the evidence is there. So if they question what you're saying, they ought to go and look and just find out uh, how, many, how many individuals that are considered neocons. And uh, he, he's, he's not the, a guy that's saying bring the troops home. He, he wants to be a tough person. Yeah.